Introduction to Animal Agriculture Manure Handling Systems Manure is an inescapable byproduct of livestock production. How it's handled is becoming more and more important, impacting not only the environment, but the producer's bottom line. This presentation is a brief look at manure management systems. Manure can mean different things to different people. This presentation defines manure as the excretion of urine and feces from the animal, including any bedding or feed that comes along with the animal's biological waste. With liquid manure systems, wastewater and wash water also enter into the manure storage unit. Manure is generally a mixture of water, organic matter, inorganic matter like sand and salt, and nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus. There are also microorganisms that feed off the organic matter called fecal bacteria that come from the gut of the animal. A common way to measure manure production is with daily excretion by weight of manure, feces and urine, pounds of nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus commonly quantified in the form of phosphate and BOD or biochemical oxygen demand, a common measure of the organic content of the manure. The primary goal of any manure handling system is to return nutrients produced by the animals back to the land. The nutrient value of manure has been well recognized as long as livestock have been raised. When Fritz Haber invented commercial nitrogen fertilizer in 1908 and marketed it in 1910, manure handling systems began to change. Commercial fertilizer caught on because it was cheap and easy to use. Meanwhile, manure was seen as a waste to be simply disposed of. Unfortunately, some farmers still consider manure a waste, but more and more are taking advantage of its value. There are many options for getting manure back to the land where the nutrients can be put to work. We'll look at different handling systems in upcoming slides. These include pasture systems, store in place, and collection and storage. Animals haul their own. Pasture animals eat grasses and other plants from the ground and deposit manure in the same general area. This can be a very effective manure management system, but depending on species, pasture systems are not always economically viable. Cattle and horses are much more adaptable to pasture systems than pigs and poultry. Some dairy operations use intensive rotational grazing systems where the animals are moved often through small fenced pastures or paddocks. Frequent and controlled movement of the grazing animal is beneficial for the pasture grasses and distribution of manure. Pasture is a cheap way of spreading manure with little need for labor or equipment, but the distribution of manure is not always uniform. Pasturing is limited in Minnesota thanks to snow and cold weather. Store in place. Manure can also be stored either temporarily or long term where animals are housed. Swine, dairy, beef, and poultry farms can use this type of direct deposit system. Bedding is added to keep the animals dry. For swine, straw or corn stalks are used. Depending on temperature, humidity, and animal size, more bedding will be added as needed. When the barn's inhabitants are moved to another building or sent to market, the barns are cleaned. Bedded pack barns are used for heifers and for special care or maternity areas. Packs are built primarily of straw with daily additions of bedding to keep the pack dry. A relatively new system for housing animals and storing manure are so-called compost dairy barns. These use sawdust for bedding mixed with manure. A compost-like material builds up in the barn. Stirred twice a day while the animals are out for milking, the compost gets deeper with time, as much as three feet. Manure is removed from the barn once a year. Most broilers and turkeys are raised on solid floors bedded with wood shavings. Portions of the barn are cleaned between flocks and more bedding is added. The partial cleaning removes manure buildup around the animal's food and water area. Manure can also be stored on open concrete or dirt lots with no bedding. Cleaning frequency can vary from once a day on concrete to a few times each year in open outside lots. Store-in-place manure systems don't require a separate storage structure, and in most cases the manure is only handled once, provided there's cropland available at the time when the manure must be hauled out. The expense of extra bedding and extra labor to deal with it is one drawback. 
Good ventilation is also needed to help remove moisture and gases that result from the manure and bedding as they decompose. Collection Systems If manure is not stored in place, it must be collected and either hauled directly to the field or to a storage area. Manure collection and transport to storage typically requires both additional labor and equipment. With deep pit or shallow pit systems, manure is stored either long-term or short-term below the animal housing area. Gravity and hoof traffic serve as cheap transport to storage through slats in the floor. The deeper the pit, the less often it will need to be emptied. Shallow pits are often emptied with the help of gravity to a larger manure storage structure. This deep pit is designed to store at least one year's worth of manure. Tie stall dairy barns collect manure in a gutter behind the cows. A powered scraper then moves the manure out of the barn. What you see here is the tail end of a tie stall gutter system. Once out of the building, the manure is either hauled to the field or to a designated storage area. Freestall barns are the most common housing system for dairy cows. Here, they have the freedom to move about the building at will. They can access water and feed or pick a stall to rest. Manure is cleaned from the freestall alley using an automatic scraper or tractor mounted scraper. Floors are cleaned at least twice a day while the cows are in the parlor being milked. Manure is typically scraped to the corner of the barn where there's a flume or cross channel. As shown, the channel is nothing more than a large concrete gutter running below floor level. This cross channel is often designed to temporarily store and transport manure. If possible, Gravity moves manure out of the barn, otherwise a pump will empty the gutter into a storage area. Manure can also be scraped directly from the barn into a storage area or spreader. Some freestall alleys are also flushed with water from large tanks located near the barn. The momentum of the water scours the alley floor and moves manure to the cross channel. From there it goes to a separator. The liquid goes back to the flush tanks or storage and the solids are stockpiled and, when possible, spread on cropland. Manure Storage Options Why store manure? Proper storage will enhance its value, keep it out of the way until needed, promote cleaner and healthier animals, and help protect the environment. Storage systems can be constructed out of concrete, steel, clay, or other synthetic materials to meet these manure handling and environmental goals. This concrete storage area can hold more than one year's worth of liquid manure from the pig barns on site. Other storage structures are designed to hold manure for only a few weeks, allowing more flexibility in timing of manure application than daily haul systems. The manure from this system can be loaded into spreaders with a front end loader. This is a steel storage tank designed for long-term liquid manure storage. The inside walls are lined with fiberglass to keep the corrosive manure elements from damaging the metal. They're generally built above ground on a concrete slab. Here's an earthen basin designed for liquid manure. To help prevent leakage, a liner of dense compacted clay is pounded into the bottom and sides. Clay lined manure storages are most economical when suitable clay is available nearby. In less suitable soils, earthen manure storage can be lined with synthetic materials including rubber, high density polyethylene HDPE, and polyvinyl chloride PVC to prevent any seepage into groundwater. Protecting groundwater is the key to any manure storage structure. Design and construction is permitted through the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. These requirements often include the installation of monitoring wells to help keep an eye on the integrity of the storage area. All manure storage areas are not created equally. Different types have different purposes, which can lead to confusion over manure storage terminology. We've been discussing manure storage structures, ponds, and basins. Lagoons, however, are not manure storage structures, but are actually manure treatment systems. Designed to hold four to five times the annual manure storage volume, lagoons are first filled with fresh water. 
and only about one quarter of the waste is removed from the system each year. This design and management promotes microbial activity that helps break down organic matter in the manure. Solid manure systems often make use of long or short-term storage. Temporary or permanent stacking areas are typically located in fields where it will be spread when the crops come off. Both temporary and permanent stockpiles are regulated by the MPCA. One type does not fit all operations when it comes to manure storage. The manure's moisture content and type of bedding play a role. Geographic features of the area, as well as economic considerations and farmer preferences, all make a difference in storage selection. For instance, clay-lined manure basins will not meet permitting requirements in karst areas. Clay-lined storages would not be cost-effective where there is no clay. Where sand bedding is used, systems require a concrete bottom to allow equipment access to remove all the sand unless it is settled out prior to storage. Manure storage size varies by need and producer choice. Numbers of livestock, volume of runoff water, and how often a producer plans to spread are factors that help determine storage size. Cropping practices and available land for application also play a role. Manure storage structures must be designed and managed to keep manure out of surface and groundwater. Proper design and construction helps limit pollution by manure's nutrients. Good management and equipment upkeep helps reduce the risk of overflows and accidental spills. Land Application The primary goal of any manure management system is to get the manure's nutrients and organic matter back to the cropland in an efficient and profitable manner. In some systems, particularly liquid systems with high nutrient manure such as swine finishing, the fertilizer value of the manure significantly exceeds the cost of application. Getting the most fertilizer value from manure involves knowing the nutrient content of both the manure and the field it's being applied to. It's also important to know what crops will be planted and have realistic yield goals. Armed with this information, a producer knows how much manure applied per acre will help to reach yield goals. While stored, different components of manure will settle out. Some solids will sink to the bottom while others float to the top. Before being taken to the field, stored manure should be mixed or agitated. This process helps shake loose the solids that have settled and helps provide more consistent nutrient content throughout the pumping and land application. The next step is to transport the manure to the field with tanks and tractors or through pumps and pipes. Liquid manure can be pumped through a six inch hose more than three miles from storage and applied directly into the ground where the hose hooks to the tractor. The red arrow shows the hose that runs from the manure storage directly to the application equipment. Manure can also be surface applied or sprayed across the ground, but if it sits on the surface too long, much of the valuable nitrogen in the form of ammonia is lost. This method also produces strong odors that can linger for days. Turning the manure into the ground as soon as possible after surface application helps reduce odors and loss of nitrogen. Next up, we'll look at application equipment that can eliminate the need for a second pass to incorporate manure on the field. With a disc incorporation applicator, the manure is pumped onto the surface and immediately covered. The red arrows show where the manure comes out and the discs then fold soil over it. Manure can also be immediately incorporated or injected straight into the ground with what's called a sweep injector. The V-shaped tool cuts a six inch deep trench where the manure is pumped after which discs behind the sweep close it up again. This is a similar injection system with discs used to create the trench. If working properly, these systems leave little or no manure on the surface. Another type of system pushes tines into the ground to make shallow holes. Manure is applied on the ground in front of the tines. This is a low impact method of fertilizing alfalfa and pasture. 
While not really incorporating the manure, the tines do create shallow holes that act as a repository for the manure. Solid manure is generally applied on the surface with large spreaders. Shot out from the side or rear, the application area can be more than 40 feet wide. There is no single best way to land apply manure. The system must be chosen based on manure consistency, cropping system, available labor, farmer preference, proximity to waters, land slopes, soil types, and other concerns. Improper land application of manure can be a significant pollution source for our lakes and rivers. Thus, it is critical to reduce the risk of contaminating our natural resources through proper manure handling. This includes respecting setback distances from tile drains and surface waters and keeping application equipment in good working order to reduce the possibility of a spill. Potential odor issues and environmental concerns have some farms treating manure to concentrate the nutrients and control odor. Concentrating the manure nutrients allows for more economical transportation of the nutrients farther from the production site. Some treatment systems can generate electricity by fueling generators with the methane gas produced as manure breaks down. Manure treatment systems include anaerobic digestion, which produces methane used to generate electricity or heat. Aeration encourages the growth of aerobic bacteria that break down organic matter in manure and help reduce odor. Composting is another aerobic system that reduces the manure volume and creates a nearly odor-free product that can be land applied or sold as a fertilizer for farm and home use. There are also commercial products available that can be added to the animal diet or manure storage to aid in the breakdown of the manure. It's unclear how much impact these additives have on the odor and gas emissions from manure storage. Research is continuing on a variety of manure treatment systems. Installation of manure treatment systems is currently driven by energy costs and available land for nutrient utilization. For more questions on manure handling systems, contact your local or regional extension office or visit the Manure Management and Air Quality Program at www.manure.umn.edu.